The following victim would like to share her story. She'd like to remain anonymous, but hopes that her story helps others. Uh, every story is verified prior to reading, and this story is verified to be 100% true. This is her story. I met David Nichols online, and to cut the story short, I fell in love with him. Yeah, pretty foolish, right? We became boyfriend and girlfriend last December the 18th, as what he remembers, but as far as I know, it was December 20th. We'll decide that as it was December 18th. Everything went well. I mean, I was happy and in love with him. I love how relationships go because everything is so different from my previous relationship. Everything is so mature and serious. And well, I guess I became mature and serious handling the relationship compared to before. I noticed some red flags, but I chose to ignore it because I loved him. And when you love someone, it's not right to doubt them or her. Well, on my belief, foolish again. He has a daughter named Maria, and she is so pretty, and I really can't resist her smile. It feels like I'm going to keep saying yes to her every time she smiles at me. Every day we are chatting, and he will call before he goes to bed just to hear my voice. So, yes, let's cut to the story time there. Our times that he feels naughty at first. I told him I cannot send nude pictures and videos to him because I really can't do it well and to do things like that. But as time passed by, I love him even more. So I decided to obey what he asked me. And yes, I took videos and pictures of myself naked and sent them to him. By the way, he knows my Facebook password. I gave it to him because he keeps talking about me cheating on him. But I don't know his. The last week of December, I think it was the 30th or 31st, he went to Dubai. He said he had went there for business purposes and that he was uh, building a company there. And I believed him. He said he will stay for two weeks and then go home to London. And then he will go here to the Philippines to meet me and take me back with him to London. I believed him again. While he was in Dubai, he got into trouble because he said in Dubai Bank will not let him withdraw his money. He needed to pay $700 to process his account so that he can access his account in Dubai. I provided the money. I sent him 36,000 Philippine pesos last January 5th, 2021. After I provide the next day, I asked him if everything is okay and he said no because the bank is asking for even more money for the processing of his clearance so that he can withdraw any time in Dubai with a large amount. So again, I sent him 21,000 pesos on January 6, 2021 for the payment for his permit to withdraw a large amount of money in Dubai. But he will have to wait until next week to access his account and to get clearance. A few days passed and I asked him how he is and he said not fine because he doesn't have money anymore for food. Well, I love him, and I was really worried about him. So even if I'm sick at the moment, and I really didn't have the money, because the last money I had, the 10,700 pesos, I rushed to 7-Eleven to cash in my account on a Gcash card and sent it to the account that the embassy would provide. In short, another money again. This time, 10,000 pesos, so that all that is left for me is 700 pesos for food. Good thing that time I still had some food in the refrigerator. After I sent all this money for the processing fee, his account, because he cannot access to withdraw a large amount of money, he needs to withdraw a huge amount of money to pay all the persons who is working for him in Dubai. That he is only allowed to withdraw $50 a day, which is not enough for him to pay all the people. And days passed, he really wanted to go home to London, but he didn't have the money to buy a ticket. To make the story short, I sent him again another money for his ticket, this time 27,000 pesos on January 18th of 2021. The next day after I sent 27,000, I asked him when he will go back to London, and he said Friday on that week, but something happened because Maria, his daughter, got sick and he took some money from the 27000 I sent him to pay for the hospital. He sent a, to his sister in London to pay the hospital. And to cut the story again short, I sent 
another amount of money, 15,000 Philippine pesos, on January 22nd, 2021, just to complete the money for his ticket. But I made him promise me, though, no matter what happened, he will go home first, settle all his problems, because in London, everything will be okay. By the way, the 15,000 pesos of the 27,000 was not my money. I borrowed it from someone, and the 15,000 pesos that I sent, I borrowed from someone else. He then went back to London the next day after I sent him the 15000 for his ticket. I think it was the 23rd or 24th of January. January 25th, 2021 Filipino time. And the date he said he wanted to give me a present that day. He also said he left home and headed to the market to buy some gifts for me. A few hours ago, he returned home. And he said he had already sent the package here to the Philippines. He sent me a picture of the gifts. He sent me... And it was cash amounting to 30,000 British pounds. He said it'll arrive here in the Philippines the next day, which is January 26th of 2021. Someone called me. She said she works for customs, and her name was Jovelin Paderin. I don't know if it's true. She said I need to pay 37,000 Philippine pesos for the tax on the package because it became a VIP and confidential so I got confused and I checked on the customs website and it says there is no payment or imposed for goods regardless of the amount. I attached the screenshot from the website after I read about it and asked the number who called me to send me the account number where I can pay the tax and she gave me some account under the name of Karen. This account is also the one I've been sending money for David while he was in Dubai. So I guess everything is legit. After I made the payment for this, I called Jovelin and I asked that I sent the money and she said I will have to wait because the tax clearance is being processed. The next day, Jovelin called me asking if David paid for the non-inspection permit. So I messaged David asking for this permit if he paid it. By the way, the money, the 37,000 pesos was not mine. I borrowed 32,000 from my boss and 5,000 from my team of coworkers. So I messaged David asking about the permit, and that's the time things get worse. I left him a message while he was asleep without about the situation. I told him I can no longer provide that big amount of money. I have no one to lend that kind of money to me, and I had already lent and borrowed over 70,000 pesos from people and friends around me. Not to mention my own personal savings is completely gone. Today, January 28th, 2021, and we are still talking about the package, and he's insisting that I should provide the money and pay for the package. He is insisting that I should lend from my boss and from my parents and from all the people I know to provide 75,000 pesos. Jovelin is telling me that the non-inspection permit, and he is threatening me that he will send all the videos and nude photos to me, to my Facebook friends, and he will post them on all social media, and he will shame the world. He said he will shame me if I don't provide and pay the package tax because he is so worried about that package. I told him I'll kill myself if he'll do that. I really don't know what to do now. I have no idea to this end the mess and to escape from this mess. That is why I really wanted to end my life just to end all of this. I don't want my grandmother to worry about me so much that she might not make it at all and I can't take it. I can't take it for the rest of my life. I don't even know how to pay these people that I borrowed the money from, and they really need their money. The victim attached deposit slips of everything and screenshots. She also asked for help from the police, best policeman who's her best friend. But I'm so hurt right now, I have a lot of problems, and has sat it to it. Thinking about my life, I'm nothing. I'm such a messed up person. I messed up big time and I don't know what I did wrong. All I did was love someone with all of my heart. I know I'm foolish, but I really did love him. I was begging him just to send back even some of the payment I borrowed, but no use. He blocked me on WhatsApp, but his number still shows up as active. I also reported our conversation on WhatsApp and printed it. The victim sent photos that are stolen of a man with his daughter. 
Some of the phone numbers are a plus 44 UK free voicemail number and payment slips that went to people all over the place, including a lady in the Philippines. This tells us that the scammer possibly had a money mule or several money mules all over the world accepting cash. He also sent photoshopped and stock photos of an iPhone, purses, watches, and jewelry like scammers typically do, saying that he sent it in a big package. All of the photos were found on Google search and are just stock photos. He also included fake payment slips, fake transport slips from a fake delivery courier company, photoshopped photos receipts from package companies, and she included several text messages, which, judging by the writing, we can tell that the scammer is from a very popular and well-known scammer country. I'll let you guys decide which country, but yes, it's one that we all know. Unfortunately, once the money is sent, she can't get it back. And the best thing to do in this situation is block the scammer, no matter what kind of threats he makes to you. If he does have nude photos of you or video of you, or to any victim that goes through this, the best thing to do is block and never pay. Because when you pay a victim who claims he has nude photos of you, he's only going to turn around, accept the money, and then ask for more money and more money and more money. Upon reading the voice chats and message chats that they had in WhatsApp, the scammer is very manipulative. He brainwashed the victim and he used fear to try and control her. He made her feel guilty for not paying for things and was very nasty when it was all said and done. This type of scam is very typical and unfortunately, as I said, once money is sent, it's gone forever and there's not much you can do to retrieve it. We'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. Unfortunately, this is a very common scam and it can lead to total destruction of a person's life. And at the end of the day, the scammers don't care. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to share your story, you can find us on Facebook under the page Scamming Scammers Action, or you can drop us an email, scammingscammers at gmail.com. We review our Gmail address every other day. If you'd like to do a Skype video with me where you talk about your encounter with an online scammer, please send us a message or an email. I'd be happy to Skype with you, and you can share your story. If you'd like to Remain anonymous. You can always just write us your story. Once we verify it, I will narrate it for you and you can stay completely anonymous. Thanks again. Take care and be safe.